What'd you decide to do with your meat, Bradley? Go downstairs. Huh? Cook it. Huh? Good. No, I just wait for long. Yeah, we're downstairs. Okay. Let's turn to number 489. Let's stand and sing the first and last. Glory to his name. 489. Faith is a powerful thing to have in our lives, isn't it? Yeah. We should be thankful that God gives it to us. <laughs> Hebrews 11, we're going to read verses 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I saw this article that came out this week. I thought it was too good not to share with you. Uh, I teach ancient world history, so this kind of thing comes up all the time, which is kind of cool for this particular class. There is a city in the Jordan River Valley that today's archaeologists call Tal al Hamam. Uh, it was a Bronze Age city that they say um, in the year 1650 B.C., which would have been 3,600 years ago, was completely destroyed. And now the archaeologists and scientists think that uh, either a meteor or a comet exploded, but they've never been able to find a, a crater. So now, now they're thinking it exploded in the air, and uh, it was, they claim it was the force a hundred times stronger than what we dropped on Hiroshima in Japan 80 years ago. 
So that would have wiped out all 50,000 of the people who live there. Well, now it's beginning to look like, ironically, although they won't say it, this is the same area where Sodom and Gomorrah was. So, and we all know the story from Genesis, don't we? Why God did fire and sulfur came down from the sky, wiped out everybody. Um, the sand had actually been turned into quartz in this. They found quartz, mm -hmm. glass-like substance, which could have only been uh, created by a fireball, which they said would have been 3,600 degrees. That would have turned the sand into quartz. So we don't need that evidence, do we? Because we take it on faith. Right. 20 years ago, they did a study in an air tunnel to see if it was scientifically possible for the Red Sea to have parted. Well, guess what they found? It was scientifically possible. Do we need that? No. But it is kind of cool how God keeps shoving it in their face. <laughs> so we have faith. Let's stick with it. Whatever it is in our life, what hits us, let's keep our faith. Let's stand and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. seems like, of course, a lot of it is, is just going from to a ground color. It always seemed like that it was one <laughs> day. I see it. It, it always seemed like that, you know, uh, if you, we need a frost. You know, you need some cold weather, and it helps, helps those. You're going good. Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, makes, it makes those leaves turn better. Uh, all right, she, I'm all out of whack, man. <laughs> <laughs> One more time. <laughs> all right, good. Jess, it's good to see you this morning. Glad, you, glad you're here. Um, anything else before we start? Anybody? All right, let's pray. Let's start. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We just praise you, Lord. We thank you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you, Father, for your healing hand. We're just looking after us and taking care of us. We pray for our Sunday school class here this morning. That 
you just be with us, have the Holy Spirit lead us, guide us through it, and we can do the things here that you would have us to do. Thank you, Father, for loving us, for saving us. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Yes. Okay. Are we good? Harvey, can you hear me back here? Yeah. We good? <clears throat> Eric? Yeah. We all right? Everybody good? Okay. Um, oh, a couple of things we need to talk about. First thing, let me tell you something. And I need you all to help me with this. I'm serious about this. And I forgot it last week. And sometimes I do this and sometimes I forget this. When we finish up our lesson in here, Make sure that I give you the scriptures and the memory verse for the next week. All right, we're putting it on. Pat's putting it on on the church Facebook page every week, but I forgot it last week. So remember that. And when we get done, if I get off on a going in a different direction, make sure you remind so that we do that. Okay. Uh, oh, Bible verse. You know, last week in our Sunday school class. Or in our uh, Sunday night church service, you all did a really nice job with that Bible verse. Where's Becky? Becky went. Becky did a, our memory verse, did a really good job with that. I can't tell what y'all were going to do. I mean, the week before that, the preacher says, anybody got any Bible verse? Y'all just sit there and look at it. Like, <laughs> we're not doing that. Well, and then last week, we got 10 or 12. So we're doing pretty good in there. Let's stay with that. Stay with those Bible verses. There is... There is really no reason that a person in an adult Sunday school class can't pick a Bible verse off the top of their head in their sight. I mean, we, and I know that you all can because I've seen you do it. So, let's keep that in mind, okay? Uh, let me see if we got anything else here. Okay. I think we're in pretty good shape. Take your Bibles, turn to, I want to look at the Second Timothy chapter 3. Turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And look at verse number 16 and 17. We just want to take a minute to look at this. We've got a lot of Bible verses we're going to do today. So we're going to start right here. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. This says, All Scripture given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfectly, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. What, what we need to think about, and we've talked about this in our Sunday school class, this is what we're trying to do. All right? One of the things that we're working on is to get in the habit of studying instead of just reading. And the reason that we're studying this is so that we may be thoroughly furnished into all good works. You know, last week we were talking about being doers of the word and not hearers, okay? We want to know, basically we want to know what we're doing. We want to understand what we're doing and we want to know what we're talking about, okay? Which is thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, know the book of James. Book of James, chapter number 2. James chapter number two, verse number one. Book of James chapter number two, verse number one. Would you stand, please? Chapter two, verse number one. This is our memory verse. Let's read this together. My brethren, brethren have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. persons. Okay, thank you. Be seated. One thing you need to notice right there. And we're going to talk about this again here just a little bit. But you notice how he starts that with my brethren. Go back over in chapter 1, look at verse number 2. See where he starts there with my brethren. What we need to understand as we go through this book of James, James is writing this to save people. Sure. Right? We need to remember that as we go through. This, the book of James is not for a lost person. This is not where you would take a lost person and say, now here, let's look at this. This is for saved people. This is for us. Okay. All right. Let's take a minute and talk about. We want to start with verse number. Verse number nineteen. We're going to look at verse number nineteen through twenty-seven today. What we want to talk about here just a minute is the wrath that we talked about last week. Okay. One of the things that we want to remember here, and these are things that we did talk about last week. When we talk about this wrath, we were talking about being mad. Okay, 
That's what we're dealing with here. We talked about the fact that we understand that it's a sin. We talked about the fact that because it's a sin and because of what we've been studying, that we know what to do with it. We know how to manage it. We understand that God is going to give us a way out of this. And he also tells us, specifically here when this occurs, that we are to be slow to speak, swift to hear. We need to remember that. One thing that we didn't talk about last week, and we want to make sure we understand this, and I think you all know this, one of the problems with this wrath is that when we get mad, right? Now, now we're talking about, we're not talking about anger, you know? We're talking about getting mad, boom, I'm mad. Now, something happened, okay? When that happens, if we're not very careful about that, and I mean very careful, if we don't handle that as a temptation, and if we don't back up and keep our mouth shut, what's going to happen is in a matter of about 30 seconds, we're going to ruin our testimony. Yep. Yeah. Right? That is important. You know, if when we were talking about last week, you know, you're handing out Bible tracts and somebody, some guy walks by and spits on you because you're handing out Bible tracts. Now you're mad. Next thing that happens is you got him on the ground just feeding a far out of him. All right? That is what everybody's going to remember. It doesn't matter what you've done for the last 10 years. Right. What they're going to remember is that right there. And when they talk about you, that's what they're going to talk about right there. Right? You know, our testimony, and we're talking about our testimony past our salvation. Right? How I live, what I do, how I act, what I think. Okay? That's important. That's very important, particularly to the people around us. We've got to be careful. You can lose it right there in an instant. Okay? All right. Look at verse number 22. Now, we talked last week about doers and hearers. Doers of the word, hearers of the word. All right? Look at verse number 22 where it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. All right? In your Sunday school book, in uh, lesson number four, which is where we're working right now, the title of that lesson is Faith is Responsive. To God's word. Okay? One of the things that we need to remember and what we're talking about here is our faith, which is our belief in the scripture. That's what we're talking about when we talk about faith. Our belief in the scripture becomes evident when we respond to God's word by doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now we're going to get into this much, much deeper later on. But remember that. Our faith shows up and our belief in the scripture shows up when we respond to God's word by doing what he told us to do. Okay? All right. Take your Bibles. We're going to look at a couple of Bible verses. You go to the book of Luke. The book of Luke. Um, chapter number six. Book of Luke, chapter number six. And verse 46. Book of Luke, chapter six, verse number 46. I use for Good. Got it. Book of Luke, chapter number 40, chapter number 6, verse number 46. It says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house, dig deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house, and it could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house is great. Turn over to uh, chapter number 8. Luke chapter 8. Look at verse number 21. <coughs> Chapter 8, verse number 21. And he answered and said unto them, let's start with verse number 20. Verse number 20 says, And it was told him by a servant which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. My brethren, my mother and my brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are those which hear the word of God and do it. Okay? Now, go over to chapter number 11. Chapter number 11, look at verse number 28. 
chapter 11, verse number 28, it says, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All right? Now, see something? Oh, I was, I was supposed to ask you on my five verse, wasn't I? I forgot that. I'll do that in a minute. We'll get right back to that. All right. He, the Holy Spirit tells us plainly here. James tells us, or uh, Luke tells us plainly, we are supposed to hear the word of God and keep it. See, now the problem that we have, and this is the problem, is you've been told. I've been told. Mm -hmm. We've been told plainly. You're supposed to hear what's going on here, and you're supposed to do what I tell you to do. Right. Right? We know that. <coughs> now, and what's going to happen, and it's not just in the Scripture. What's going to happen is the preacher's going to come in here just a little bit, and we're going to have a Sunday morning service, and I, I can tell you this for sure, and I'll bet you a dollar that when, by the time he gets done, he is going to have told you something that God said you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So we can't back up and say, well, I didn't know that. You know, that's not going to work. We know, now we know. The Bible verses we're going to talk about in just a minute. We know that we are supposed to be doing this. All right? Now, go back to the book of James. Back to the book of James. Chapter number... Four. Look at James chapter four. Look at verse number seventeen. Look at James chapter number four. Look at verse number seventeen. All right. This says, "Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and see, look at me. See, now we know. We've been through this. Now we know. He's told us. We've read it. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin." All right. So, now, I know that God's telling me that there are things that I'm supposed to be doing. All right? I know that, and according to what this says, because I know it, and if I don't do it, then we're talking about sin. Now we're in a whole different thing here. All right? And the problem with this is, we're not just sinning. We are sinning knowingly. Sure. Remember we talked about that? All right? <laughs> sinning ignorantly and sinning knowingly. We are sinning knowingly. Now, the other problem with that, and it just gets worse, you know, not only am I sinning knowingly, I'm living in sin because I know this, all right? Every day, I get up, I know I'm supposed to be doing something, I'm not doing it. I'm sinning knowingly, and I am living continually in sin. Now, one thing that's going to happen here, and we're going to see this a little bit, when we talk about sin, right, there is a difference in how we sin, sinning ignorantly, sinning knowingly. But there is not a difference in how bad the sin is. So when we're talking about sin, we're talking about, you know, it's, it says that if you commit one sin, then you, you're yeah. convicted of the whole law. Okay? So this is, this is not good. All right? Okay. Now, let's stop right here for a second. And I apologize. I asked you all last week to find some Bible verses. Remember that? See, there don't, them eyes go again. They start going like this. And Bible verses, find Bible verses about what something <coughs> God told you to do. Remember that? Everybody remember that? Yeah. Anybody got one? Okay, Penny. I can imagine like uh, Ephesians 6 2. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Ephesians 6 2. two. Okay, go ahead. It says, Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment. Good, good. Honor thy father and mother. Okay. Anybody else? Pat? James 1, 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father who sits to visit the fatherless and the widows and their afflictions and to keep himself in the spot of the Lord. So, I'm what, so what I'm supposed to do, what you're talking about to do is to visit the fatherless and the widows. That was done. Okay. Good. Anybody else? Don? Okay. Render unto Caesar the faith that is Caesar's, to God the faith that is God's. Okay. Render unto Caesar. Okay. That's good. Okay. Make it. Can you speak that up just a little bit? Ephesians 4.32. Ephesians 4.32. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. 
Okay, good. Be kind one to another. Joe? Galatians 6 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Peggy, do you have one? Yes, John 15. <coughs> I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Okay, so what I am told there is I need to abide in. Okay, good, good. Anybody else? Seth? James 5, 12. But above all things, my brother, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yeas be yea, and let your nays be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Okay, good. So keep your word. Good. Anybody else? Is that everybody? I'm the same as Becky, so I'm not going to say anything. Oh, come on. <laughs> we must make three trips in there this morning. That's fine. That's fine. All right. Y'all did good there. Now, the problem with that is, and that's just what we were talking about, is everything we have said here, now you know. Yeah. Okay? And now you are accountable for it. All right? We are supposed to be doing the things that we hear, just like these verses we had. All right, good. You know, and there's another place that y'all can help me a little bit. You know, if I forget something, and I do. I get all wound up and forget this. And say, hey, Dave, you forgot this. Well, are we going to do this or not? Okay? That would help a little bit. Okay, now, back to hearers and doers. Um, look at verse number 23. Actually, yeah, 23. Let's start right there. This says, For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. See right there is another promise from God that we talked about last week. Mm -hmm. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridled not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Okay? Now, let's talk about this just a minute. What we're talking about here basically is three different guys. All right? We've got three different men here that we're going to talk about. The first one, he says he's a hearer, not a doer. A hearer, not a doer, and he deceiveth himself. All right? We talked about this guy last week. This is the guy that comes to church every Sunday, all right? He's here, he reads his Bible regularly. He pays attention to what's going on. Then when he leaves here, he goes to work Monday, and then he goes to work Tuesday, and Tuesday afternoon, somebody comes by and says, what was you talking about Wednesday morning, or Sunday morning? What did you preach or preach about? And he doesn't know, all right? He doesn't remember, okay? This doesn't got away from him because he is a hearer, and he's not a doer, all right? It, the Bible talks about the face in the glass, right? The mirror is like it's here and it's gone, here and it's gone, okay? That's the way this guy is. He had it. He learned. He listened. He paid attention. But two days later, it's gone because he is not doing anything with it. Yeah. Now, the bad part about this is he says he deceived himself. This man is saved, and he truly thinks he's doing okay. He truly thinks he is being obedient because he comes to church and because he reads his Bible. This is the guy who, when you have your com have a conversation with him, and you begin to talk about, well, what are you doing? See, he's got nothing. He's not doing anything. Okay? All right? Look at verse number 25. All right? Here's the next guy. Now, this says, Whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. All right? The difference in this guy is, when you go talk to him on Tuesday and you say, well, what did your preacher preach about Monday, Sunday? He knows. And the reason he knows is because he says he continueth therein. All right? He is a hearer and a doer. The reason he knows what the preacher was talking about Sunday morning is because he's trying to do it. All right? Something that the preacher told him, something that he read in his Bible that he understands that God wants him to do, so he's working on it. Right? That's the difference in him and the first guy. He continueth therein. Right? 
It also said that God's going to bless him because of this, that he is working on doing what it is he believes he's supposed to do. So when you talk to him about sermons and what the Bible says, he knows. He knows what his sermon was. He knows what the Bible says because he's working on it daily. Okay? Now, let's stop here just a minute. <coughs> See where it says he looketh? See that? This guy, the difference in this guy, the first guy, first guy, remember the mirrors? Here, he's gone. Here, he's gone. All right, this guy stops and looks. Okay? He's not just wandering by glancing. All right? He's paying attention. He stopped. He looks, he's listening, he's thinking about this, and he is actively trying to do it. He looks at this, and he studies it. See, now that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to look in, and by the way, we are looking into this perfect law of liberty. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. And he pays attention, okay? Now, perfect law of liberty, okay? Remember the discussion we had uh, last week? about when we're reading our Bible and we read, you know, and we need to understand what these things mean as we read them. Remember that? Okay. And we're working on the idea here that you all have read this. I'm working on the idea that you've read it three or four times. Okay? Okay? What's the perfect law of liberty? Yeah, I'm looking right at you. Okay, good. It's, we're talking about the Word of God, right? Perfect law of liberty, Word of God. Now, let's be a little more specific. Emma, you're exactly right. That's right. Anybody? Say it. Would it be the, the laws that he's given us to live by and the an instruction for us to live by too in order to keep that? Where? Where, this, where, where did he give us this? What? See, I... Yeah, we're at. You're right. Word of God. We're gaining on in the Word. Okay, come on, say. I mean, the Ten Commandments of the Book of the Word. All right. Okay, good. Okay. I, I can work with that. Now, think about this a minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Remember the three commandments that Jesus Christ left us with before he left this world? Remember them? What, what, what were they, Craig? Tell me one. You heard Andrew say that, didn't you? <laughs> uh -huh. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and all thy soul, and all thy mind. What's another? What's the other? There's two more. Love thy neighbor, love thyself. Love thy neighbors, love thyself. One more. We're commanded to go into the world to preach the gospel. Love one another. Yeah, wait. Is, it, uh, is that not one of the three? Yeah, no. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are. You're exactly right. We are commanded to go into the world and preach the gospel. Oh, this is not one of the three. Third one is love one another as I love you. Yeah, these are the three basic commandments that Christ left us with. Now, now we're talking about the perfect law of liberty here. The reason it's perfect is because it's the law of Jesus Christ, and and that's perfect. Okay, liberty. We're at liberty. What we are at liberty from is no more sin, no more death, and no more Old Testament law. Now let's stop right there just a minute. Okay. When we get to it, which is way down the road, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Old Testament law. But basically, what we want to think about here is I don't have to sacrifice animals no more. I'm free from that. Uh, I, can eat more, I can eat pork. You know, I'm free from that. I like ham, so I can eat pork. Those types of things. Ceremonial law is what we're talking about. We're free from all that because it has nothing to do with our salvation. Okay? So... Perfect law of liberty. Now remember, remember those three things. We're going to meet them here again in a little bit. Okay. Look at verse number 26. If any man among you seem to be religious, he bridled not his tongue. Now listen. He deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. That's, that's right. bad. You know, that's bad. That's not good. What we need to be thinking about right here is Pharisees. Pharisees, Pharisees. That's what we need to be thinking about. All right? Here's a guy who is just like the first guy. Same thing. The only difference is he, want, he wants to tell you about it. Right? He bridled not his tongue. Now think about this a minute. We talked, we talked last week about the boy wipers. Right? Remember the job I was talking about that are working out in Tennessee? 
when you work a job like that, you've got men coming in there from all over the country. And I'm really all over the country are coming in there to work. When you have a group, when you put together a group of 40 or 50 men that are going to do this work, inevitably, always, and you all know this, always, there's going to be two or three guys in there who you're going to say, hey, how you doing? What have you been doing? They're going to say, well, I just left California. I've been working on the biggest border that the world has ever seen. I welded more <coughs> welding footage than any three guys. We made the biggest lift. We had the biggest crane. We did this. We did that. Da, 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 da. No, on it goes. Okay? Now, I learned this a long time ago. When you run across a person like that, the best thing to do, remember, swift to hear, slow to speak. Remember that. Best thing to do is take a step back. And I always think, you know, is this guy really as good as he says he is? Or if he is, why is he having to tell me all this? All right? <laughs> this is the guy that we're talking about right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. This is the guy comes on Sunday morning, all right, reads his Bible, and he's the one that when you say, hey, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great, you know, I just finished reading the Bible, read 45 times. Family's doing good. Uh, we just memorized 137 Bible verses, can say from one end to the other, and you see that view right there? That's mine, I haven't missed a Sunday in five years, all right? Now, step back, and thank you, all right? Why does he need to tell me about this, okay? There is the problem. And see, the problem with it is, if you, when he gets done, all he says, you say, is that right? What are you doing for the Lord? Mm -hmm. He's yeah. got nothing. He's got absolutely nothing because he's doing nothing. All right? And there again, he is deceiving himself, right? Because he thinks he's doing okay. He honestly believes in his heart that this is what he's supposed to be doing and this is how it's supposed to work. He deceiveth himself in his heart and the, and the real problem and this is, this is sad. It says his religion is vain. Yeah. Okay? That's not good. All right? And we're assuming that he is saved, but his religion is no good. All right? Now, look at verse number 27. It says pure religion. All right? Notice that it says in verse number 26, this man's religion is vain, pure religion. Now, the Holy Spirit through James is getting ready to tell us, here's what religion is supposed to be. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, this is your verse to you, Mike. All right. <clears throat> Visiting orphans and widows is a tremendous ministry, and it's important. Mm -hmm. It needs yes. to be done. Right there, God says, you need to be doing this. Okay? And to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Now, and that is good. But this, you know, it's deeper than this. There's more to it than just visiting fathers or visiting orphans and mm -hmm. widows. Okay? What we're talking about here is compassion and purity. All right? Pure religion is compassion and purity. All right? That's what this is talking about. Now, Remember the, remember the commandments we just talked about? Okay? When we're talking about pure religion, we're talking about love of the Lord, love of each other, and love of the lost. All right? That's the compassion that we're talking about. And it's not just, you know, we, we need to have a burden for this. Okay? You look at somebody out on the street and you say, yeah, I got somebody who's sure the words are lost and I do hate it for them and on down the road to go. That's not love of the lost. True. All right? Yes. We need to have a burden for these things, and we need to have a burden for each other, and we need to have a burden in our love for the Lord. Now we're talking pure religion, and we need to have a tremendous desire to keep ourselves separate from the world. That's what this unspotted thing is talking about. Okay? Okay. Well, we just finished chapter one. <laughs> Got any questions? Everybody good? You know? We did pretty good there. You all did pretty good. This is one thing that we need to understand, and we're going to start chapter two here maybe in just a minute. What we need to understand is that this information that we're dealing with is for saved people. And when you look back at chapter one, the things that we talked about, this is everyday living, okay? These are things that are going to happen to us and are going to go on in our life every day. We've got trials. We've got temptations. We've got all that to deal with every day. 
And that's what James is talking about in remember. This is what God, what the Holy Spirit wanted these new Christians to know first. After their salvation, here's what you need to know next. All right? And it works the same with us. After our salvation, right here's what we need to know. Here's what's going to happen to you now. All right? And here's what you need to do about it. And it tells us plainly what God's what God is, where God is in all this. You know, He's going to provide us an out for our temptations. He's going to give us wisdom. He's not going to tempt us, and He expects us to be doing what He told us to do. All right. Now, look at chapter two, verse number one. This is I think we're going to enjoy this. Most of it's going to be next week. All right. Now, remember this. When you look at this, right? Not only is God giving us things to do and showing us what to do. Now, right here, he's going to tell us what to think. Mm -hmm. Here's what you do. Here's how this works. And here's what you need to think about this. Okay? So it begins to get a little deeper. Look at verse number one. My brethren, have not the faith for our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons. All right, see, we need to stop right there. Now, I know in my heart y'all read this. Right? What is, what are we talking about when we talk about respect of persons? No matter the class. What? No matter the class, education, status, they're providers of all persons. Okay. All right. So when we talk, when he says that we should not be a respecter of persons, all right? Uh, you're right. No, no, that's what we're talking about. What we're talking about here is things that we should not do, all right? Which are. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about thinking about people differently because they're different, right? See, in this day and time, there were Jews and Gentiles, there were Greeks and barbarians, there were bonds and slaves, there were rich and poor, okay? There were a lot of different classes of people. Do we have classes of people today? Is that a yes? Yes, we do. Yes, we most certainly do. So the next question is, do we, <laughs> do me and you, all right, does our church, are we a respecter of persons? Do we look at people differently? And it's not so much as looking at them differently, it is that we think about them differently. Okay? You with me so far? All right. Disrespecter of persons. You got it? Okay? Are we talking about racism? Is that what we're talking about? Not necessarily. Whoa! He said, yeah, and you said not necessarily. Okay? Why do you think we're talking about racism? Well, the respecter, the being a respecter of persons, it shouldn't matter what race they are, what where they come from, language they speak, whatever. They're still a human being. Okay, let's stop here. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You, you're right. You're right. Let's stop here. Look at this verse again. It says that we have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with respect to persons. Okay, this respect to persons is a bad thing. All right? We're talking about... Give me some other words for it. Hold, just hold on to the racism. I Go think. back to the scripture of whosoever will. That's, that, that's in the same category as no respect for a person. Whosoever will. You're not separating the people. They're all the same. Okay, oh, all right, you're right, you're exactly right. And what we're going to look at, and this is going to be next week, what we're going to look at is um, why, I, I think. Say that one more time. <laughs> Whosoever will. If the scripture okay. that that is included in, in right. my mind, is in the same category as no respect for person. Okay, in other words, what you're saying is... We're not separating the people. Right, we should look at everybody the same. Right. Okay, big question, it do Right. Okay. Uh, showing favoritism is pretty much what it's saying. And the best, one of the best examples that Jesus gives us is the Good Samaritan. The Levite, they passed by and they had faith in God, but they were showing it with respect to the person because they didn't want to go help the Samaritan because they chose, hey, I, I don't want to associate with that. <laughs> they didn't help him because of who he was. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good, good. And see now, we, we begin to talk, when we, you know, this racism word keeps coming up. We're talking about prejudice. We're talking about favoritism. We're talking about uh, uh, thinking more highly of one person because of who they are, how much money they got, that kind of thing. 
Think about this for a minute. If you all come in here and I said, and we started, and I said, all right, everybody stand up. And y'all stood up. And I said, now, what I want to do, this is why we're going to start doing this now. And I'd like for all of you men to bring your stuff and come right down here. I want you to sit right here. All right. Bring everything set here. You ladies, if you don't mind, I'd appreciate it if you could go back here and sit in them two back rows and if you could kind of be quiet while we're doing this. <laughs> okay? Now, what do you think about that? Yeah. that that's not going to work, is it? Huh? All right. Oh. Give me your opinion of people from the north. <laughs> right, see, there we go. Right, there we go. You know? And those, th- those are things that we need to stop and think about for a minute because it does, it cuts a lot deeper. And this respect of persons, when we begin to be partial and we begin to look at people differently because of who they are, how much money they got, where they live, that kind of thing, this gets bad. In one of the, one of the commentaries that I was reading, the guy calls it a very heinous sin. Right. This is not a, this is not a good thing at all. <coughs> we're we're going to talk about that. Uh, okay, that's a good place to stop. In, in your Sunday school books, I think where you should be right now is starting lesson number five. All right, that's pretty much where we are now. Leroy, what is it I told you you were supposed to remind me to do when we got done? Uh, memory groups next week. Thank you. Good, good, good. See, now there's a man who hear it and continue with it. Whatever. <laughs> continue with it. Uh, next week, we're going to work on James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. James chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Our memory verse is going to be James chapter 2, verse number 13. Okay? James chapter 2, verse number 13. Anybody got anything else before we quit? Everybody good? Joseph, we'll pray. We'll be done. Lord, I thank you for the day you give us, Lord, the ones that gathered here this morning to, to learn more about your word. We just thank you, Lord, for today and this commitment to our Sunday school class and, and studying, Lord, to, to help us to get deeper into your word and apply it to our